Yes, yeah. So there's a, I think there's a little bit of confusion around how people actually um, can can go get onto the registry. So some people are asking if their specific hospital is involved or if they need to be referred else, elsewhere. There's one question here about um, somebody in Belfast and would their hospital be able to recruit patients? Yeah, so I mean, the, originally the way that the study was set up is that we um, you have to have we had a national ethical permission to run the study and then for each site we had to get local ethical permission to run the study so when i did this originally most hospitals are, are actually indeed covered to take part in the study um, the way we tend to do it is that the local pi that's the person your consultant responsible for your clinical care enrolls you into the study um, um, by contacting them. And there aren't many hospitals that aren't part of the study. There are a few. I mean, one thing we haven't done yet, and it's maybe something we should take away from tonight is speak to Martine and see like Martine and, and Maxine are doing for clinical trials, whether we should have a map of who is the local clinician and the center so you can easily access that information. Okay. Um, we, we do prefer that because obviously a lot of the time we obviously also, you know, it sounds odd, but we have to verify the diagnosis. Um, and therefore having a clinician say, well, yes, it's this liver disease and can give us the associated clinical data with that is also quite informative. So I, I know that's a little bit laborious and maybe one day we'll create a slightly more centralized process, but just the way the study was set up and for ethical reasons, at the moment it has to be done through the local PI. Um, but of course, there is you can contact UKPSE and get that information centrally through the study coordinator if you want to find out who is your PI. And maybe we'll try and develop more of a map uh, with uh, UKPSE support about that. So. It's a great it's, idea about a map, isn't it? Yeah. And, yeah. And, but you can also get hold of Dalgit. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, Google will do it for us. <laughs> Um, but Dalgit is the project manager for PSC and you can just phone him or email him and we've got the, the details on our website yeah, and he can get helpful. the ball rolling in that that respect. That's the, that's the dream, isn't it? To, to not just give an effective treatment for PSC well, patients, but to catch it really, that. really early. I was leading to perhaps, you know, we've already, you know, myself and Eva um, through PSC, we're, we're trying to see, is there some diagnostic biomarkers, you know, for PBC, a sister autoimmune disease, we have a lovely antibody test. If we had the same for PSC or some group of antibodies that doctors can measure and say, well, you know, there's a chance you may have this, then it would become a lot more easier. So that's that's where the dream is. And that's what we need to focus down. So I think it's probably a, a good place to end on the dream. <laughs> But we've covered so much this evening and um, I think it's like Palak said right at the beginning it's a really exciting time for PSC patients and whilst it's a really difficult disease to live with there's more hope than ever at the moment so thank you Simon and thanks to Palak as well um, for, for giving up your time this thank evening. You everyone. Thank you everyone for all you've done and contributed towards the studies it's uh, without you there wouldn't be these studies we wouldn't make the advantages that we have so thank you very much.